<laughs> hey, this is Tyson McGuffin, and thanks for tuning in to This Week in Pickleball. Alright, welcome back to thisweekinpickleball.com. This is Hashtag Randall Report, coming to you live. And we've got a very special surprise guest here for you. On behalf of Medissa Leaf, and he's a 1987 NBA Hall of Famer. Yes, he's Mr. Rick Barry, and he's, no wait, that's not him. This is him right here. As we pump up the music here, hey, how are you doing today out here at the PPA Tour Stop in San Clemente? Well, I'm doing great. I'm just happy to be here, and uh, I'm part of, on behalf of Medissa Leaf. Uh, they're the official CBD company sponsoring the PPA, but uh, I just love pickleball. It's awesome. So for people that remember you, of course, they're going to associate you with basketball. How did you come across pickleball? Just the short version of that. Well, my wife got started, and my wife's a great athlete. She was an All-American basketball player, only woman have her jersey retired at her alma mater. And so uh, she played tennis some, and then she got introduced to pickleball and said I should really take a look at it. And so I was playing tennis, but I kind of stopped that because it was hard on my body. And so, uh, so I, uh, I, I started to play, and I really loved it. And now I've become, you know, fanatical with it. What round are you in, and what are we well, we're uh, looking third, at today? Third, third round. We have to we have to win the rest of our matches to have any chance at all for doing something with a medal after our first uh, poor performance. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I like sometimes playing from behind. I don't mind that at all. And uh, now it's just a matter of whether we get out there and we execute. So I've got a really good partner, and Jeff is terrific. My first ever pickleball tournament. He was my partner back in Florida a couple of years ago, and so we're hoping to win another medal here. And we've got our work cut out for us. Looks like you were able to fight through a little bit of frustrating play there and actually win the game. Yeah, well, I finally made a couple of good shots at the end. I made a lot of bad mistakes. This is any like any sport is a game of errors, and you can't make the errors. And made a lot of errors in the first match that we had, and it cost us, and almost cost us in this one. So fortunately, my partner had some patience, and he played well enough to carry me along until I finally played well. So uh, a win is what it matters. It doesn't matter how pretty it is, as long as you get the W. Hopefully, I'll play better in the next game. And sometimes you were talking to yourself, you're like, Rick, Rick, no, no. I always do that. I always, I mean, I'm, I'm very hard on myself, very demanding of myself. I don't like to play poorly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know sports psychologists say you shouldn't do that. Well, it works for me to be hard on myself. So mm -hmm. I don't allow myself to get away with mediocrity. And the thought came to me that that probably doesn't just come from pickleball. That probably doesn't just come from when you're playing basketball. That's probably anything you're doing that's competitive. You expect a lot of yourself, right? Yeah, I, I do. I have high expectations for myself all the time. So, but that's good. I mean, uh, if you work out what you're doing and you get to be pretty good at it, uh, you minimize your mistakes and that's what it all comes down to. And I'm, I've gotten better at the game and hopefully we're going to fart our way back to go ahead and get a chance to play for a medal after the horrible first game that we had. Did you say fart your way back? No, fight my oh, way Oh, fight, back. fight. I probably do the fart. <laughs> We'd like to check in with you from time to time if that's okay. No problem. Great. Okay. But uh, I just love pickleball. It's awesome. Unfortunately, came up a little short today playing the first time I've played in a tournament where I haven't gotten a medal. So, uh, oh, really? Yeah, that's a little disappointing, but I was also playing down to people 20 years younger than me. So, it's always better to play against better people if you want to get better. But to sit out here and to watch Ben Johns and Simone Jardin and all the other great players who are out here, it's it's a real joy. Uh, I've gotten, uh, you know, to, to know a lot of them, and they're really fine people, but just outstanding athletes. Amazing coordination, uh, and you got to have amazing coordination and quick hands to play this game and a nice touch. So, it's a a fun game and it's the fastest growing sport in the United States and I'm happy to be a little small part of it. We're watching a little bit of this action right here. When you watch this, you realize how much <laughs> you have to learn to be able to be so consistent and so good. Although I can make a shot like we just saw right there because I can do that very easily, hit a ball out. But the, these players are uh, at a different level. It's, it's, it's kind of. The, the, here's the one thing I was having an interesting conversation with my partner Jeff Johnson, whose father was a great tennis player, and Jeff played some tennis. Is that in pickleball, you can actually play the game and get to be pretty good, and actually make some shots that like you know, like a Ben Johns might make, right, or a Simone. But the thing is, is that you can't do that in tennis. You're never going to be get be good enough to play and hit balls like Roger Federer, or like or like Djokovic, or all these other guys. I mean, it, it's just it's such a fun game that everybody at different levels can play it, not beat your body up, and uh, I'm just so happy to be a part of this. And, and I know Medicinal Leaf, we're, we're getting a lot of fans here in the pickleball world who come up, a lot of the pro players even are coming up and putting the, the, the product on and just saying how much it helps them and, and makes them feel a whole lot better. So hopefully people will check it out sometime. You can go to medicinalleaf.com and, and look it up.
And you know, when I was growing up, I would watch basketball players and try to imitate some of their moves. Are you doing the same thing here in pickleball, trying to imitate or find out some moves that you can work into your own game? Well, you know, it's not like it's not like you have individual moves that you can make uh, in basketball. And here, it's a reaction to the ball. It's just a matter of making sure that you make the right decision with what shot you try to hit. In basketball, you can create all kinds of wonderful things. In pickleball, you see there, you have to react to what the ball is doing and what the player is doing and put yourself in the right position. So there are some similarities, but I do think that uh, this is quite a bit different. It doesn't give it the individual freedom because it, it truly is. In basketball, I have the ball in my hands. I'm not having to react to it necessarily. And the other player has to react to me defensively. Here, you have to react to that ball. So, mm -hmm. And that's why you have to have good anticipation, great hands, and, and be able to move well. Why do you think pickleball is growing so much? Well, because it's easy to play. I mean, it's not very difficult. To try to learn to throw a ball up in the air and hit an overhead tennis serve <laughs> is not the easiest thing in the world to do for an uncoordinated person. Mm -hmm. A person who isn't all that coordinated can actually go out there, bounce a the ball, and hit it on their hand, and knock it back over the net and have some fun. The other thing that people like about pickleball is it kind of brings back that competitive nature and you can scratch that competitive itch. Do you get any of that? Do you find yourself being competitive out there? Oh my god, I don't know anything else other than to be competitive when I do things. And the thing I missed about not playing basketball is the competitive aspect of it. That's why I got into long driving, which I did for a while and was successful. I've gotten into this. I've won some, you know, uh, open open uh, gold medals and a lot of other medals. And so, yeah, I love it. It, it keeps the fires burning inside. I and mean, if you're an athlete and you're a competitor, you never want to stop competing. And this is another way for me to compete at an advanced age and have some fun doing it. Well, let's just wrap up here. Do you wish you had Medissa Leaf when you were playing in the NBA? Oh my God, yes, because <laughs> all of the opioids and all the other stuff that they have out there now, and you, it's all natural stuff. It helps with pain. It helps with inflammation. People should really give it a try, but make sure you're doing it with a company that is doing it the right way and has superior products. That's the one thing why I'm with Medissa Leaf, is I know because I'm involved in the CB business with a company that actually manufactures a lot of high quality stuff, one of the biggest producers, and they don't have their own brand and they sell to other people. So I know what it takes to have a good product and these guys are doing it the right way. So it's really cool. Very good. Thanks so much. We'll be back with more after this. This has been Rick Barry on This Week in Pickleball. Thanks on behalf of Medicine Leaf. We'll be back with more after this. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, this is Tyson McGuffin. Thanks for tuning in to This Week in Pickleball.